Hello and welcome to today's webinar, Moving Past Inc. with eSignatures, Best Practices for Evaluating and Selecting a Solution for Your Business. I'm Teresa Resick, Director of Webinars here at AIM, and AIM is your host and producer of today's event. And with me today are Ted Rome of Technology Evaluation Centers and Raheem Kaba of eSign Live. And eSign Live is the underwriter of today's webinar, and we thank them for their support. And thank you for taking the time to join us today. And before we get started, I just wanted to offer you a few pointers for viewing today's webinar. By joining our webinars live, you can customize your own viewing experience. Feel free to open, close, or resize the different windows. And put across the bottom of your screen is a list of all the widgets available to you today. You can download a PDF of the presentation at any time. Just look to the resources list that's to the right side of the slide area. And there are also a few other documents and links in there to help you learn more about today's topic. Feel free to ask questions throughout the hour using the Q&A feature, and we will hold these questions until the end where we should have about five or ten minutes to answer them, but you can also use this um, to ask for any technical support or help that you may need as well. And this webinar is being recorded, and it will be posted to AIM.org's Webinars on Demand Library in just a few days. I'd like to introduce our speakers today. Pleased to have both these gentlemen with us. Um, first up is Ted Rome, who's the Senior ERP Analyst at Technology Evaluation Centers. Ted primarily covers ERP, and he also covers Enterprise Asset Management and CPQ software, and that's Configure Price Quote software, um, along with some related technologies such as e-commerce and e-signatures. Ted has over 20 years of experience in large-scale selection, design, development, and implementation projects. Prior to joining TEC, Rome worked for a number of companies, including Oracle, Syntex, Genentech, and CareFusion. And we also have with us today Raheem Kaba, and Raheem is the Director of Product Marketing at eSign Live, where he and his team are the outbound voice of the eSign Live product line. He is responsible for driving product awareness, def defining e-signature use cases, and gathering customer insights and requirements in the rapidly growing e-signatures marketplace. So right now, I am going to turn things over to Ted Rome to begin discussing the business case for e-signature software. Ted? Thanks, Teresa, for the great introduction, and welcome, everyone, to today's webinar. In the first part of the presentation, I'm going to be describing the role that e-signatures and e-signature software play in business process digitization. So over the last few years, there have been many disruptive technological advances that are dramatically changing business operations and challenging archaic business processes. The increasing use of electronic signature technology is one of these disruptive technologies. Of course, the other related technologies such as electronic content management and even mobile devices have played a significant role in this disruption. But electronic signatures are now having a significant impact on industries that have historically required a legally binding signature on a document. In many organizations, the process of obtaining a signature on a document is still extremely painstaking and involves many manual steps. A company still prints, sends a form for completion, a recipient will sign and fax or mail back the form, and the company will receive and review the form, and then the company countersigns the form, and finally, the consumer can then start using the product or service. And these are the minimum number of steps that need to occur in order to complete the paper process. These processes can, of course, be costly and error-prone. E-signature solutions make it possible to completely eliminate the paper movement and wet signatures from these time-consuming business processes. Bill Bryce, who is the chairman of ESRA, just the Electronic Signature and Records Association, wrote that just as email once transformed business and communication, e-signatures and e-records are completely altering the world in which we live, saving us both time and money. In today's digital and mobile first world, organizations will not only save time and money by using e-signature solutions, but consumers increasingly expect to have digital solutions. There aren't many millennials that will visit a bank branch and fill out an application to open a checking account these days. Other types of transactions like buying a house locally or even in another country can be performed completely digitally. Of course, it's quite exciting to watch the King of England place his wax seal on a letter to the Allies in France and then see the document heroically carried through enemy lines. But getting an auto insurance policy shouldn't be a heroic adventure anymore. Um, we think it's time to lose this business practice that is more than 1,000 years old. 
Latest research from AIM shows that only 21% of respondents in their 2016 market intelligence report are currently using digital signatures. Advances in the internet, mobile devices, and cloud computing have made e-signature technology a stable and secure method for obtaining signatures on the documents. And we see that e-signature technology is moving up on many organizations' radar as a key to digitally enabling business processes and the underlying transaction workflows. Businesses who sell all types of products and services have seen that they must be present on the web with appealing and instantaneous product options. E-signatures are often a critical piece of fully automating a purchase transaction. Many industries can benefit from digitizing processes that require a signature. Of course, industries that process huge volumes of paperwork, like banking, insurance, and government agencies, are already taking the lead in digitizing some of these processes. But other companies can benefit by digitizing key business processes. The Aberdeen Group published a report where they noted that the best-in-class companies, and that's the 20% or the top 20% of performing organizations, they were more than twice as likely as the lower 80% to be using e-signatures as part of their contract management solution. Now, the bottom line here is that digitizing transactions that require a signature helps to grow the business, automate and improve business processes, and provide a measurable ROI. A strong e-signature solution is a key part of business process digitization. And if you look at just do some simple calculations for document processing, we can see that some of the benefits of implementing e-signature software. If a company is processing 100,000 documents that cost on average $4 to produce, mail, review, copy, and store, then the company is spending some $400,000 on this single document. When a company does the simple math on the paper documents that are used across the business, the numbers can grow very large very quickly. And don't just look at the cost of documents that go outside the company's four walls. Many internal documents can also be automated. There are other benefits that can be used to justify the purchase of e-signature software. Other benefits to consider when evaluating an overall return on investment include reduc reduction in distribution costs, requiring less physical storage to hold all these documents, and other the associated reduction in administrative costs that go along with these paper processes. The electronic tracking and management of documents can also strengthen regulatory and legal compliance. Look at just one customer and what their savings have been, the Royal Bank of Canada. They report that of their 8,000 financial advisors save some two to three hours per week after digitizing the account processes. This adds up to 24,000 hours per week, which saves them annually some $8 million. Organizations that make the move to all digital processes also see increased operational efficiencies, such as a reduction in errors. Common errors, such as improper information populated in the documents or not having all of the signature boxes, signature boxes completed, and then the rework associated with these errors can be also almost completely eliminated with an electronic process. Not to mention the turnaround time of digital processes is vastly superior to that of the traditional document processes. E-signature software vendors can provide you with detailed ROI calculators to help you develop a complete picture to support your purchase decision. The ROI calculators are quite extensive and even educational, and I'd recommend you getting one and working with it. <clears throat> and finally, before I pass this off, I just want to point out that thorough software evaluation is crucial. When you choose an e-signature solution, as with other important enterprise technologies, it's essential to undertake a rigorous software selection process. The organization needs to make sure that a solution fulfills the business needs, can meet your industry and regulatory requirements, and function as part of the enterprise's overall technical architecture. The e-signature selection effort might not be as large as, say, an enterprise resource planning solution. However, the decision shouldn't be taken lightly. The decision should be made by a cross-functional team comprised of business and technical experts and be championed by a senior executive within the organization. Like many software decisions, a company will have to live with its e-signature software decision for many years to come, especially when the solution becomes an integral part of the organization's business processes. The success of a single line of business in implementing e-signature solutions often quickly spreads across the organization. So what might first be seen as a small or isolated e-signature initiative for a particular line of business 
will quickly turn into a corporate digitization initiative. So be careful not to jump on the first low-cost service that shows up on your favorite search engine these days. Note that the e-signature market has seen some significant growth and change over the last few years since the most recent Forrester Wave report on e-signature software was released in 2013. The industry has seen a number of large acquisitions and a significant number of new vendors have appeared on the market. That's why it's really important to take the time to perform a detailed software evaluation before signing up with an e-signature provider. And next, uh, Teresa's going to walk us through a live poll. And so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks, Ted. Um, we just wanted to ask you, so come back to your computers here and answer this question for us. Uh, what's your primar primary reason for evaluating e-signatures? You know, why did you want to hear this webinar today? Are, is it increasing business and employee productivity, reducing costs related to paper, automating and digitizing business processes, improving the customer experience, your customers, the people that you work with every day, your outside constituency? or e-signatures are part of a larger digital transformation initiative at your company. So go ahead and check the, uh, check the one box that is the, the, the primary reason or the most important reason um, for, for your interest in, in evaluating e-signature solutions. So I'm just going to give you a second to make an answer there before we go ahead and show you um, the results of um, for how everybody's checking this box here. And so, um, uh, Raheem, let me go ahead and ha have you come in here and take a look at these results with me. And is this the kind of breakout that you see, like, typically with your own customer base and, and all the people that you work with looking for these selections here? Um, looks Fantastic. like the uh, automating yeah. and digitizing yeah, business processes in general is uh, a driving force here. Fantastic. Yeah, actually, so that, that goes hand in hand, I think, with the last one as well, um, you know, e-signatures as part of a larger digital transformation initiative. That's definitely two that we're seeing come up quite often. Uh, the other one I, would, I was expecting a little bit higher, to be honest, was improving the customer experience. Uh, but that's usually when we're talking about customer-facing transactions uh, where e-signature plays a role. Uh, but very, very interesting results. So thank you to everyone that participated in that. All right, so let's let's move on then. So Teresa, thank you, and thank you, Ted, as well. Tag, Ted and I will actually be playing a little bit of tag team on this webinar today. So I'll kick off the next part of this webcast and really walk you through the top six evaluation criteria for e-signature software selection. Um, what, I'm, what I'm about to present is really based on research and interviews that uh, with organizations across industries that have either considered or are using e-signature technology today. Before I jump into that uh, evaluation criteria itself, I always like to take the opportunity to show our audience how e-signatures can fit into a larger business process. So when you think about e-signatures, you're probably associating with the solution with the act of simply signing a document. But it's important to remember that the signing step is typically part of a larger process that requires all of the different elements on this slide that's typically built into an, an e-signature solution like eSign Live. So at a high level, if you really look at it, organizations are spending a lot of time and money to automate two key processes. Now, the first one is the front-end document generation system, which basically serves up documents that a client or perhaps an employee needs to sign. And today, that process is probably paper-based in your organization. And on the back end, uh, you have a document management or ECM type of system where scanned paper documents are archived back into the system. Now, as an information and records management professional in your organization, you've probably made a lot of headway when it comes to automating these processes with a records management system or perhaps a scanning and capture solution um, to really drive uh, paper out of your processes. But when it comes to uh, getting that signature, um, you know, those processes probably fall back to paper and you lose all of the efficiency gains that you made in trying to automate that process. But as you move to a fully digital process with these signatures, what's important to look out for in a solution is that it's flexible enough across this workflow. So from authenticating the signer into the transaction to how data is captured on your forms to delivering the final e-signed document to your signers at the end of the process. Now, every use case for e-signatures is different, so it's important uh, that you have the flexibility to pick and choose 
uh, what you need for a particular business process, and to make sure that the solution you choose can adapt for future needs as well. Now, in your role as an information project manager or a records manager, a records manager in your organization, you're going to want to control how and where your e-sign documents and audit trails are stored and archived. So whether your system of record is SharePoint or FileNet or perhaps Box or OnBase or maybe another type of ECM or document management solution, um, the e-signature solution that you choose should be flexible enough so that you can manage how and where your records are generated and stored. All right, so let's take a look at the top six evaluation criteria for e-signatures. Now, the reason we're going through this um, is that from our experience, we know that it pays off to do your due diligence before selecting a solution. Um, you're, you know, if you're involved in evaluating an e-signature solution for your organization, and, and you probably are if you're attending today's webcast, um, your name is likely associated to the success or failure of that project. So my hope today is really in these slides to provide you with some of the key requirements that were top of mind for our customers when they were evaluating um, solutions in the market. So the first criteria is really around white labeling. Now, if you're looking to use these signatures outside the firewall with your partners and your customers, for example, you want to ensure that the transaction is completely white labeled from beginning to end. And what that means is for your brand to be front and center at all times. So really look for a solution that allows you to fully white label the, the e-sign process um, and a solution that really gives you complete control over the look and feel of the application. Now, this includes all of the web pages, all of the mobile interfaces, all of the emails and notifications are, that are sent to your customers. You know, what this is really about is maintaining trust between you and your customer. Um, the last thing you want is a third-party e-signature vendor sending emails to your customers using their brand and their, their email domains, which could look like a phishing scam um, that your customers would ignore or even worse, might even, uh, wouldn't simply trust that transaction. So with white labeling, the result is a more trusted transaction and ultimately a better customer experience that will really help drive completion rates for your digital processes. So whether that's, a, that's signing a contract or maybe opening an, a new account on your web portal, perhaps signing a disclosures document, or any type of other customer or citizen-facing transaction that may require a signature. So it goes without saying that um, the e-signature solution that you choose, like any other software application, needs to be very simple to use for all types of, of users. And that's because signing is such a universal concept in business. So no matter what your age is, no matter what your position is in a company, and whether you're on the front line or you're at the C-level or perhaps you're a C-level executive, um, it's got to be really, really easy, easy to use. Now, e-signatures, for example, are being used by CEOs, by customers, by suppliers, by partners, um, by employees across your enterprise. Um, and that's true for who we call the sender. So that's the person that's preparing and sending the document out for signature. And it also has to be easy for the signer, the person that's actually signing the document at the end of that process. So look for a solution that has an intuitive and, and responsive user interface for all types of devices so that it's quick and easy to prepare documents. You also want to make sure that the solution offers an optimized mobile signing experience for signers uh, because you want to be able to empower your employees and your customers to really sign anywhere and on any device. We've also listed here a number of other considerations to look out for, such as the ability to send documents to a large number of people, um, support for templates and layouts, um, as well as the ability to really cu completely customize the workflow so that you can tailor that experience for your customers, partners, and employees. Now, if you're planning to integrate e-signing capabilities into your website or maybe your mobile app or even a core system uh, inside your organization, you'll want to make sure that the solution you're looking at really helps your developers embed that e-signing quickly with all the different types of to tools that are available in the market. So make sure that the, the solution that you're looking at has things like an open API um, and also has fully supported SDK. So those are the, the building blocks that your developers need um, that can really fast track their development efforts. Uh, we've actually had customers on our side that went from development to going live in production in, in just a matter of days. 
Um, your developers may also have questions along the way. So they're, as they're developing their prototypes, um, you want to make sure that the vendor you choose um, also has the necessary support channels. So for example, a developer community or a user community, um, and even a responsive technical support team that's really at their fingertips. That's going to be really important as your teams are looking to embed uh, e-signing capabilities into whatever application or, or, or um, system that you're looking to integrate. All right, so moving on. So evaluation criteria number four. This is all about audit trails. Now, as a records or document management professional inside your organization, you know that managing information is a lot about compliance. Like, you guys probably are facing this every day. Now, if you've ever participated in an audit process, uh, you know that having complete audit trails um, really helps to ensure that you can easily demonstrate compliance to both internal and external auditors. But this can be a really big challenge in the paper world. So if you're still, uh, you know, uh, you know, kind of in the in the paper environment, if all of your processes are still paper driven, this can be a huge, huge challenge. And that that's why there's such an advantage with digital processes, uh, which really allows you to capture as in much greater detail that's really available on paper. And this includes how and when the transaction took place. Now the signed document uh, with its standard or basic audit trail gives you a lot of reliable information. So information about what was signed. But it really doesn't tell you about how that document was signed. And for that, what we recommend is leveraging a visual audit trail. Now think of a visual audit trail as a visual recording of exactly how that transaction took place. And you can see on this slide how that might look like. The visual audit trail captures and replays all the web pages, all the documents, all the disclosures, any, and any pop-up windows exactly how they were displayed to the signer. This makes it possible to completely recreate a signing event even years after the fact, which in the end can really help to streamline the audit process. So it's really important uh, to not only look for a solution that offers a static or basic audit trail, but also a visual audit trail that can come in handy for these type of compliance or even legal reasons. Okay, so we'll move on to security now. And the security of a solution is often an important deciding factor for organizations that are evaluating e-signature solutions. Um, if you're managing information and records at your company, and you probably are if you're part of today's webcast, keeping that information secure and only accessible to those who have authorization is prob probably top of mind for you. And because you're often dealing with legally binding documents, you want to make sure that the solution that you choose secures the document and ensures that it can't be tampered with. So look for a solution that uses digital um, signature technology, which is essentially a cryptographic method um, to tamper seal those documents and make sure that they're visibly invali uh, invalidated excuse me, um, um, if the document is tampered with. Um, you can think of this type of um, this type of audit trail or anti-tampering controls um, as built-in security that really guarantees the integrity of the e-signed document and really helps to protect you and your customers from any sort of fraudulent behavior. So when you're evaluating a solution, have a look and see what type of anti-tampering controls are built into the e-signed document and make sure that it's easily verifiable um, to make sure that that document is is um, you know the integrity of the document hasn't been compromised. Um, you can do this through one-click verification. In our solution, you're able to do that. Um, and we, we're also embedding the audit trail inside of that document for easy verification and storage. So that's really important to keep in mind. Now, there's some e-signature solutions out there um, that only apply a digital signature wrapper at the end of the signing process, which can put your organization at risk. So make sure that the solution is tamper sealing the document after each and every signature is applied. And finally, criteria number six, um, this is all about flexibility. So it's really important because uh, more often than not, you may start using e-signatures for one use case in your organization, but you want to keep the big picture in mind. So ensure that the solution can be used for multiple use cases in your department or your team, but also across your line of business or even across the entire enterprise. So things to look out for, the first is deployment options. So can the solution be deployed on-premises or on a public or private cloud? 
Um, you know, if, you're, if your business is operating globally, does the solution leverage data centers in your region or your country so that you can meet those data residency requirements in the cloud? Now, ultimately, this is, this is really up to your organization to decide based on your business and compliance and IT requirements, but having that flexibility to move from one deployment method to another or perhaps even use multiple deployment methods inside the same organization can really help minimize that risk. Now, when it comes to implementation options, is the solution available out of the box? Can it be integrated into a larger process um, or application? And does the vendor offer pre-built connectors for applications like SharePoint and FileNet and Box, for example? If you're looking to use e-signatures across multiple channels, um, does the solution enable you to deploy across the web? Um, you might have a call center, so can you deploy it in, across your call center? You might even have a retail branch if you're at a, if you're at a bank. And can you, can you implement e-signatures inside of your own mobile app? Is there an SDK available for you to integrate that type of capability inside of your mobile application? And lastly, does the solution offer a wide range of user authentication options to verify the identity of signers? Now, what's important to note here is that some e-signature vendors nickel and dime their customers for some of these capabilities, so make sure to ask the vendor what's included with the service and what they're charging for above and beyond that. Um, you know, look for things like access to technical support and all the authentication options that I was talking about and special features um, that may not be available out of the box um, with, with the e-signature provider. All right, so that was the six evaluation criteria. I'm going to pass the mic back on to Ted, who will provide some uh, best practices around evaluating and selecting the right solution for your business. So back to you, Ted. Hey, Ted, are you still there? Just checking. Might be on mute. Yeah. Uh, earlier I had talked about how it's crucial to perform a thorough software evaluation. And now I'm going to walk you through uh, eight steps to follow when evaluating e-signature software. So e-signature software selection is similar to other software selection efforts, but we have some key differences. Um, many software initiatives will often need to be justified and then have a team assembled and tasked with making the selection. But in e-signature uh, software projects, what we often find is that the the software really has been identified as a key component of the overall digital transformation initiative. And so the team has already been placed. Some of these things are already set up. But um, just to make sure before I go into these that if, if this isn't the case for your organization, um, just make sure that this step isn't overlooked. So now I'm just going to walk through the eight steps that, that we think are key for um, doing the evaluation. Step number one is to identify your primary use cases. And here you want to uh, coordinate some internal workshops to identify the business processes that will benefit from digitization and then prioritize the top use cases here. And to identify the top use cases, take into account where your e-signatures will have the biggest organizational impact and consider where to focus on internal or business-to-business -business or customer-facing transactions. Also, you want to see what other companies in your industry are doing and, and maybe make some of the things that they're doing. Uh, step two is the map then, your before and after business process workflows. Document your current paper-based processes from start to finish and map out the future processes and consider process improvements that can be made when introducing the e-signature software. And note that your document vo volumes, um, including the number of pages within the documents as you're mapping these business processes. And make sure, though, to consider that you might still need to have paper-based processing even after you've um, made some of these processes completely electronic. Step three is to then define your requirements. So now that you have all the processes in hand, we can create a detailed list of all the e-signature software requirements and make sure to engage your cross-functional selection team and bring in experts from different departments like IT, legal, and the other business groups to provide the appropriate level of input. Collect the, all the requirements, such as those from legal and the compliance group uh, data residency requirements, branding and customer experience, security, and other deployment options. And step four then is now you, with everything you've got in hand, you can now do your uh, vendor research. So we can go and look at a number of different sources that are available to help us narrow down the um, vendors in, in the marketplace. The Forrester Wave 
um, is, is one of the most complete analyst publications that's been done to date, even though the last publication was in 2013. G2 Crowd is also uh, a, another source that you can go to see what vendors are out in the space and how they're rated by um, various people in, out there. And then currently the top vendor names though in the, in the industry include DocuSign, Adobe, Right Signature, and of course eSign Live by Vasco. So now you can narrow your list of vendors down to a short list, uh, maybe, maybe three vendors at most you want to start working with on your short list. Now step five is now you're ready to issue the RFI or RFP. You can send the formal request for information or request for proposal to the e-signature software vendors. In addition to seeing what the vendors have to offer and their pricing models when you send out the RFI or RFP, this step also helps you identify how responsive a vendor is to your company's requests. And step six, we recommend uh, that you request a formal demonstration from the vendor. This is key and shouldn't be skipped. A formal demonstration script is, is developed for the vendors to follow that is tailored to your organization's unique needs. And what you don't want to do here is let the vendors just get by with some kind of canned sales demo where they show only the good parts of their solution. Make sure to cover the unique needs of your organization and also look at the six key decision criteria that were just presented in this webinar. Finally, you can create a project plan. Now, at this point, your decision is close to being made, and your team can start to put together the project plan for the e-signature solution implementation. Make sure to include all the key stakeholders, of course, in the plan and take into account training and organizational change management that will be part of the rollout. And the last step is to make your decision. Now you're able to make the informed decision and ultimately realize all the benefits of digitizing the older paper processes. But before making the final decision, make sure you perform a final due diligence of the chosen vendor. Ask for references in your industry and with companies of a similar size. And we just have a few other tricks to getting the e-signature software solution up and running quickly. We want to bring to the front here. One key lesson learned is that the company doesn't have to try to tackle every e-signature problem across the organization at one time. Unlike other types of software, like the corporate financials, e-signature solutions can be methodically rolled out across individual business use cases. You can choose to start with a smaller volume, lower profile business transaction, and then expand to other use cases as the company, the IT organization, and the customers become more f familiar and proficient with the use of the technology. So e-signature software is kind of unique in this respect because the company can grow into the solution instead of just jumping head and shoulders into taking a corporate ride rollout of this technology. And finally, make sure that the IT team is fully engaged during the software selection project. The IT organization's architectural team will need to incorporate e-signatures as part of the organization's electronic content management strategy. And the group will also be responsible for setting up additional infrastructure such as printer drivers and storage. Make sure that the IT organization is well equipped to handle the e-signature solution now and into the future. And the last thing I want uh, uh, to, to point out is that you, you want to keep the big picture in mind, as, as Raheem had mentioned. The um, software might start on a few um, high-profile use cases, but then often expands across many other business processes across the organization. So you want to select a solution that, that will help you grow and that you can use across other parts of the organization. Okay, and now um, Raheem is going to talk about some other um, use cases and success stories. All right, super. Thank you, Ted. So let's take a, a look at some of the top uh, e-signature use cases that we're, we're seeing here at ESON Live, both in the commercial space as well as in government organizations. So if you look at banks and insurance companies and other financial service providers, many have moved their account opening processes, for example, completely online. So if you're like me, you probably visited your financial institution one too many times to sign documents in branch. Uh, so instead of having to go into the branch and fill out paperwork, um, or, or perhaps wait for documents uh, in the mail, a lot of these financial institutions are finally moving uh, a lot of their processes completely online uh, so that you're able to e-sign you know, loan applications, mortgage applications, and so on um, through their web portal without you know, having to step foot in the branch. 
Now, if we look at the healthcare, uh, pharma, and other regulated industries, we're seeing a lot of adoption uh, for use cases related to uh, disclosure forms and uh, patient waivers and consent forms and so on, as well as procurement documents for B2B vendor contracts. And in fact, across all industries, uh, we see many companies and governments alike digitize their contracting and procurement processes with the help of e-signatures. Um, this also includes internal purchase approvals, um, as well as POs and NDAs with external part parties. Now, we're also seeing organizations deploy e-signatures as an enterprise solution to gain efficiencies and really improve the overall customer experience, specifically once um, you know, they've been successful in, in a handful of use cases. Um, what we've seen is once those use cases and, and implementations are successful, tested, and proven, we see those organizations expanding their use, usage of e-signatures across multiple lines of business and departments. So this is a great takeaway slide. If you want to share with your organization, you can download the PDF of the slides, and it gives you kind of a high level of all the different types of use cases in the, in the key industries that we're seeing uh, use e-signatures today. Now, I did want to take a moment to highlight a really great case study where U.S. Bank, which is a long-standing customer of ours, was spending a lot of their time creating and managing signatures um, for their account opening processes. Uh, so the, their bankers and tellers would spend a significant amount of time retrieving signature cards from, uh, from storage and then photocopying and faxing them to other branches. Now, on top of that, because the process was completely paper-based, it introduced a lot of errors. And those bankers uh, would often have to complete the account opening process in multiple sessions with the customer. Now, at the end of the day, what that does is really frustrate the customer. So um, you want to minimize that as much as possible. With electronic signatures, uh, the bank's account openings platform was completely integrated with eSign Live, which really enabled the system to hand over those forms to eSign Live for signing. And from there, what our solution does is really take over and execute the signing process. In this case, it was through a tablet. Uh, and then in the final step, that completed form is returned back into the bank's backend system for downstream processing and archival. Um, this solution that the U.S. Bank implemented was deployed across over 3,000 branches in a two-week time frame, and that had over a 90% adoption rate, which is pretty incredible. So we were really excited to hear about that um, success story from, from U.S. Bank. All right, so now on to my final slide. Um, so, if you, uh, so we often get the question, how do you get started with these signatures? Um, there are a number of ways in which your organization can consume e-signatures, and this really largely depends on your use case, whether that's a straightforward contracting use case uh, or perhaps an integrated process where your website or service is generating the document. Now, this slide here really highlights the three flavors of eSign Live um, to satisfy the various use cases in the market. The first is our professional plan, which is really a standalone, out-of-the-box, web-based service, which largely satisfies the, uh, those common e-contracting use, case, use cases in the market. So for example, getting your contracts and agreements electronically signed. This is really a great place to dip your toes in the water because there's really no development work required. You simply upload your document, you select your signers, and you can begin e-signing in, in literally minutes. Next, we have the enterprise plan, um, and this solution gives you the ability to add e-signing capabilities to your own applications. Um, so whether, whether that's through your website or through your mobile app or even your homegrown system or legacy system, we have an open REST API as well as um, SDK, so like I said, those building blocks for integrating e-signing capabilities in a number of different languages, so Java, .NET, Apex, uh, if you're in integrating inside your, of your mobile app, we have a, a, a mobile SDK as well. Um, and, and that's going to really help you build your own integrations with e-signing capabilities. And lastly, we offer a number of pre-built connectors um, for third-party applications like Salesforce, uh, SharePoint, Box, Dynamic CRM, Office 365, and so on. And with these connectors, what we've done is done all of that integration work for you. You just need minimum uh, admin resources to get started with e-signatures inside of these popular business applications. 
So if you're interested in giving our solution a try, I encourage you to sign up for a free trial on our website. Um, and if we have any developers on the call today, uh, we do have a free developer community that gives you access to a number of developer tools and forums to help you get started. And of course, um, you know today's webcast is largely based on um, the report that we collaborated with Technology Evaluation Centers on, which is the e-signature evaluation guide. You can download that through the panel or through our website, and uh, we'd love it if you shared it with other people in your organization. And uh, just one last word from Ted now. Ted, I'll just pass it on to you for some final words about uh, your services. Yeah, um, before I talk a little bit more about tech, uh, just invite everybody to go out and try the uh, free trial, actually, in, in doing some, in working with Raheem to develop some of the content. I signed up for the free trial of their software and did some did some sample uh, e-signature documents on my own. It was really very easy and very nice to use. Um, and just a final word about tech, um, our website URL is up there. We, we provide um, software selection tools and services and various research materials to help people um, with software selection projects. We can help you uh, evaluate and select various enterprise software to meet your needs. And we're there to help you reduce the time, cost, and risk associated with enterprise software selection for your organization. And um, so that's that's it from my side. I think we have some questions, uh, Teresa. You're that we with do. See where we, we are. Have a whole lot of questions coming in here, and uh, we're going to do our best to cover them. And we have a, a nice chunk of time to talk about this. And um, I, I, w I want to start off with this because uh, this is the most popular question that's coming in here, talking about the um, the legal regulatory um, obstacles, the legal requirements. I know of the eSign Act, um, and if we can talk a little bit about uh, with both of you um, about the legality. You know, are there places where wet signatures are still required? Um, are electronic signatures valid in courts of law? Um, can we talk a little bit about that in, in general? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. We often get that question as well. So um, just a, a little bit of a history lesson here. If we go back to the year 2000, um, the eSign Act in the U.S. came into law. Um, that superseded uh, uh, another law from UEDA, which was a state-by-state -state law in the U.S., um, that essentially made e-signatures legal across the United States. Now, there's uh, equivalent laws in Canada and other parts of the world as well. And actually, if you're interested in, in the details on those e-signature laws, we actually have a great white paper on our website called e-signatures around the world. And that goes through country by country, all the different laws around e-signatures. Uh, it looks like, I, from what I saw from the attendee list here, that most of the folks on the call today are from uh, the U.S. and Canada. So big check mark legal in Canada and 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 that's and, and the US and that's fantastic um, you know one one thing that we often get in terms of legality and, and proving e-signatures in a court of law um, you know you just want to make sure that the solution that you have provides you with those adequate audit trail. So I talked a little bit about that in one of the criteria, and I think it's very important when you're, when you're looking at this from a compliance perspective, right? You want to be able to, without a shadow of a doubt, prove that the people that you're sending these documents to um, are who they say they are, and they agreed to sign the different documents. And this has a significant advantage in the digital world because you're able to capture a lot of that electronic evidence. Um, you know, in our solution, what sets us apart is we're the only one in the market that offers that visual audit trail. So we go above and beyond uh, the standard audit trail that many of the other e-signature providers uh, offer. So if you're in the regulated space and that's a concern to you, um, that's definitely something that uh, you should look out for in a solution. Um, and, and, and certainly something that a lot of our customers in, in banking, government, healthcare have really taken advantage of in our solution. Thanks. Um, Ted, I want to ask this next question of you. Someone's asking um, on-premises versus um, a SaaS solution, software as, as a service, uh, for an enterprise solution. Um, what are the pros and cons and some recommendations or some uh, things people can do to um, factor this into their own organization's planning process? Yeah, I guess, I guess um, it, it, it's really uh, um, it's, it really depends on what your organization is looking to do and what, what you're ready for. I think in general, we see more and more people moving to um, the SaaS delivery of software and, uh, and adopting SaaS in a much, um, much more um, 
extensive way uh, across across organizations. Of course, some some companies are still depending on you know the environments. Um, pharmaceutical companies, other regulated environments, still need some of that on-premise um, environment to be able to, to to ensure that it's validated and that it's that it meets you know, all the all the regulatory requirements that are governing those industries. But we're seeing that people are moving more towards SaaS deployment. So uh, it's not an easy answer, I guess, but um, it, you know, it, it depends on where your organization is and what you feel comfortable with right now. SaaS is a valid, valid solution and can have many benefits. You can reduce some of your IT costs. You can e uh, more easily have some of the infrastructure, the flexible infrastructure that's in place that might be even more secure than you can develop on your own. But then you don't have as much control over it, and cost-wise, um, really, to a degree, SaaS subscriptions can end up being more costly than on-premise in the long run, but you still have a lot of other benefits in the SaaS. So sort of a, a long-winded um, response, I, I think it's really up to your, your organization what you, what you really feel comfortable with. There's no one, one size fits all to that. Yeah, and I'll just uh, add on to that. 100% agree, Ted. And you know, at the end of the day, it goes down to the appetite for risk. Uh, what we're seeing from our customers is, um, you know, depending on their preference, of course, I mean, there's IT requirements, there's compliance requirements that they have to abide by. So regardless of whether they choose on-premise or, or the cloud, um, what, what we offer is flexibility, right? So um, if you're not sure, you can start developing in the cloud, uh, and then whenever you're ready to, you know, flip the switch and go into production. Um, what's, what's great about our solution is that it's, it's one single code base, right? So you can develop in the cloud, and then when you're ready to go to production, uh, you're really coding once but deploying anywhere. So that's, that's something that you should look out for if you're not quite sure which deployment method to go with. Um, we also have some customers that are deploying in multiple lines of business ac across the organization. Some lines of business are more comfortable in the cloud. Others are more comfortable in an on-premises environment. It depends on the use case. It depends on the level of risk associated with the documents that are being used. So a lot of different considerations there as well. So just keep a lot of those in mind. But uh, you know, at the end of the day, like Ted had mentioned, it comes down to your organization, your level of risk, and your essentially your, your policies, your IT policies internally to make that decision. But look for a solution that's really flexible enough that can uh, go either way. Um, Raheem, we have um, some people asking some uh, product type questions here. Mm -hmm. So I have the next couple of questions for you. Someone's asking about um, is two-factor authentication supported? Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, so we didn't get to go into too much detail on that, but um, you know, essentially in our solution, uh, we do offer multiple ways to authenticate the identity of the signer. Um, so we have two-factor, yes, the answer is yes. Uh, the first out-of-the-box default is, of course, email, right? So if you have a, an email account and you can log into that email and you have a password for that account and you're accessing the transaction through a notification that's coming uh, through the system, uh, you know, you're pretty sure that you know, you are who you say you are, or, the, or, or you are sure about your customers uh, and, and making sure that they have that access to the email account. Now, that might not be sufficient for your transaction, so what we do offer in addition to that is the ability to use uh, a mobile phone. So we have what's called SMS authentication. So what, what that does is it'll send a four-digit PIN to your customer on their mobile device that they need to enter in before they have access to the transaction. So that's one way to do two-factor authentication. We also have challenge response questions. So you as a sender, if you're the organization that's sending out the, the document for signature, you can enter in a challenge response, so a response that you, own, you know that they would be able to answer, and they'd have to enter that in before they can actually access the document and apply their signature. So that's another way to add, add two-factor authentication. Now, even on top of that, what we also offer is we have integrations with various um, third-party knowledge-based authentication services. So think about an Equifax or a TransUnion um, 
and, and we have integrations with those folks. So if you have a relationship with um, Equifax or others out there and you want to leverage their services for what we call knowledge-based authentication and those out-of-the-wallet questions, uh, you can also do that. And that's another form of two-factor authentication that can be leveraged as part of the transaction. So look again, look for a solution that has multiple ways to authenticate the user and, uh, and, and really look for if all of that stuff is out of the box or are you paying extra for some of those features and functions. Yeah, another question someone's asking, um, in your presentation, Rahim, you had, um, one of the steps you had mentioned uh, was uh, the anti-tampering controls. Um, someone's asking, you know, where is that security seal? Where, where does it live in the document for someone to, to see, or especially when it comes to like audit time, you know, when a year mm -hmm. later they have to pull the document to prove something? Can you speak a little bit about that? Yeah, that's a great question as well. And so all of that tamper control, um, all the digital signature technology that we're using to apply those encryption methods, um, that all lives inside of the PDF document itself. So you're not actually connecting to our service in the cloud or any other site to verify the signature um, or to tamper seal the document. You're, it's really a self-contained file that includes both the embedded audit trail of who signed in what order and when. So all of that is available inside of the document. In addition to that, the, what I was talking about, the one-click verification. Um, once you've signed a document, so if you're going to try the free trial and you get a document signed, you you can simply click on top of the signature block, and this is all about the one-click verification that I was mentioning. It will actually validate that the, the, the document had not been tampered with. Now what we're doing here is essentially we're applying a hash to the document, and it's essentially ones and zeros behind the scene, but if the document was tampered with, so even a single character in the document, if somebody added a number or a dollar sign or whatever it may, may be, you're actually going to get a big X on the top left-hand corner of that PDF document document after it's been signed that said somebody has tampered with this document, do not trust it. Um, so that's really important to look for in a solution and, and look for a solution that's doing that after every signature because the last thing you want to happen is a document that's in transit, so maybe you have five people that's signing that document, somebody taking that document outside of the transaction, tampering with it, and then creating some sort of fraudulent transaction. So you want a signature solution that actually tamper seals the document between signers and making sure that it can detect any changes that were made to the document between signers as well. Okay. Um, I have a question here for Ted, and um, in, in one of the slides that you were talking about um, in, for the evaluation process, uh, you had mentioned you know, including all the right stakeholders in evaluating technologies here. And I uh, just want you to elaborate on that a little bit. Um, what functional departments or uh, um, who all to include, who, how are you defining stakeholder uh, in, this, um, in this instance? Yeah, I guess like um, in many um, many IT initiatives these days, what what we end up seeing is sometimes a line of business can go ahead and and just kind of launch on on an initiative without making sure that it's been well thought of across the organization. So you want to make sure that um, not only have other business stakeholders who might be part of future processes be involved in the selection, but also then. Um, being being from an IT background to make sure that the IT folks and uh, legal and, and reg possibly regulatory or parts of the organization are involved in the in the selection to to make sure that you you've really involved everybody that is going to be impacted by the decision moving forward is that mm -hmm. that what yeah, you're, that's helpful thank you yes yes um, have a another question here, um, uh, Raheem. Let me ask this of uh, you. Um, someone is talking. They happen to be in the government sector, um, but they're finding the, the need to have um, electronic signatures um, uh, at different points of the process, more of, of just like a, um, a status check that uh, for milestones along a project line. Um, mm -hmm. This kind of software technology is not just for a finished product, sign it, and you're done with the document. Um, how useful is it for these intermediate steps and, and sign-offs uh, and that, those kinds of processes? 
Yeah, that's a great question. So if I if I if I'm understanding the question correctly, um, you know, we have actually a lot of government customers, both on the federal and state and local level, that are using e-signatures for internal processes. And in fact, uh, when we started back as a company in uh, 1992, um, and in those early days, uh, government led the charge. Uh, so the Joint Chiefs of Staff and the U.S. Army, which are still customers of ours today, were using e-signatures for internal approvals and sign-offs. Um, and, and a lot of them are still leveraging our solution in, in, in the same way, but also are moving to more citizen-facing transactions as well. Um, what I just wanted to add to that was that um, in terms of the e-signature solution, you want to make sure that you're able to customize the workflow, right? So if you're talking about different events that are triggered in the process, if somebody needs to review the document first before somebody else signs the document, you want to be sure that you have control over that process, that you can dictate the workflow, and to really um, kind of push documents in the order that you want them to be sent. So just having that flexibility in, in, the, in the workflow and, and, and just the overall business process is something that you should look for, especially if you're going to be implementing implementing this in a, in a larger business process, or in this case, a larger government process, where you want checks and balances to happen uh, in between that from, uh, during the process. And that's not just for government agencies. I could see that very useful in so many different industries Absolutely. and organizations. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, um, I have another question here, and um, Ted, let me go ahead and start with you on this one. And someone's just looking about overall strategy. Um, you know, what part of their overall strategy um, in looking at, at the IT strategy in general, the business strategy in general, or even specific to uh, the information management industry, um, what portion of this overall strategy should um, e the e-signature solution factor into or what organizations need. Yeah, I guess when we're talking about um, the, the digitization of some of these processes, again, I'm going to limit it a little bit to more more on the, the, the document management and content management. But So with respect to, to those processes, though, when we're talking about automating um, your document processing across the organization, and even even if we, if we consider um, some things that go on within within a company, such as just getting approval or, or making sure that your manager signed off on um, a purchase order or something like that. Um, with, with the e-signature technology, it, 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 it's, re it's really important to make it a key part of your overall architectural strategy and to incorporate the digital signatures in, in that overall you know, electronic content strategy and digitizing all these processes going forward just because and there are so many opportunities once you once people start using this and get get comfortable with it that that you can just get rid of a lot of papers so i would i would say you know make it a really important part of uh, strategy going forward thank you um, I just want to say we've been listening to Ted Rome of Technology Evaluation Centers and Raheem Kaba of eSign Live and uh just wanted to uh, give these guys a break for just a, a moment here and just wanted to mention to you some um, other training options and just some other steps that you can take. Um, it, one of the ways that you, I know training came up often uh, at, at several points in the presentation, but one of the ways that you can work for training your own organization is to look to some offerings that AIM has. Um, and we specifically offer uh, business process management training. And I've actually sat in on some of those classes, and, and it's some fantastic work. And there's a variety of training options that we do offer, um, online courses, um, in-person cl um, classes around the country and around the globe as well. And then uh, we can also make arrangements to come into your organization and into your conference room with a class, classroom full of people. Um, and, and that training is customized to what your organization needs. And so there's a, a lot of different options that we have for helping you uh, with these needs, not only for business process, process management, but also ECM in general, information governance, um, even SharePoint training. So there's a, um, a lot of different um, options um, and things to consider. So go to the AIM website to check that out as well.
you know, we are getting to the end of the webinar hour, and I just want to remind you that you know, we have been recording this webinar, and it will be available in the next day or two on the AIM website. Um, but most importantly, um, to the right side of, of the slide area, there is that resources list. And as we did mention, um, in addition to the PDF of the slides, you know, please download those because there's some really good information included um, in this presentation today and several different checklists to reference back to. Um, but there's also the white paper, uh, the research paper that um, uh, that Ted and his team authored um, uh, with Technology Evaluation Centers uh, talking about e-signature solutions. And that entire white paper is there for you to download right now. Um, and then also there are links for um, getting the eSign Live free trial and also links over to the uh, TEC website um, just to read more with the offerings that they have over there. There are a lot of great resources on both websites. I really enjoyed looking through that uh, before the webinar began. And so I just wanted to thank our underwriter, eSign Live. Uh, without the support from our solution providers, AIM wouldn't be able to uh, be able to bring you these free educational programs like the webinars. So thank you very much uh, for your sponsorship. And uh, just as we are coming to the close, I do want to ask each of our speakers for their closing thought or a key takeaway, um, some important impression to leave you all with today. So I'm going to begin first with Ted Rome of Technology Evaluation Centers. Your closing thoughts today. Um, when it comes to e-signature e software, I'd, I'd say the, the biggest thing you can do is, is, as we mentioned, you don't have to boil the whole ocean, as, as somebody once said to me here. Um, it's not like an ERP software implementation where you have to do massive changes across the whole organization. You can start with a, a smaller process and then, and then build on build on success. And that's one nice thing about putting e-signature e technology in place. Thank you, Ted. And Raheem Kaba, your closing thoughts to today. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, I say the key takeaway on my side is really ensure that you do your e-signature due diligence. Um, the number one mistake that we see buyers, um, they might be tempted to evaluate a single, single solution that doesn't really meet their long-term e-signature needs across the organization. So I'd say just look for a solution that provides you with the flexibility and scalabilities that can support you, not just today for your first or second use case, but really for your future use cases as well. Thank you. Um, that is all the time that we do have today. Thank you, everyone, for attending our webinar. For AIM, this is Teresa Resick, and we will see you next time, and have a good afternoon.